Hi, I'm Shelby Balaclaw. This is my virtual fire summit presentation for the Learning Innovation Grants. I am a fourth grade reading math teacher at Louisa East Elementary School in Lawrence County, Kentucky. I graduated from Moorhead State um, with my bachelor's degree in P5 LBD, and I just recently graduate, um, graduated from the University of the Cumberlands with my master's in teacher leadership. So modern classroom in my room looks like three things that I mainly focus on are self-paced learning, mastery-based grading, and learning design. Throughout the program, I did learn new and helpful techniques to enhance my teaching and my students' learning. So to get started, self-paced learning involves building student relationships, student motivation, lesson classification, progress tracking, opportunities for collaboration, and metacognitive reflection. As always, and with any case, those students that have IEPs, 504s, and special accommodations will always get those, no questions asked. In my school, we do an I do, we do, you do gradual release model. And all that is, is the I do is the teacher modeling the new content for the students. We do teacher and students model a problem together. And then you do students try a problem on their own. This model is meant to give students multiple times of seeing how something is supposed to be solved before they get a chance to do that on their own. So the I do portion of the gradual release, it could look like this as an example. So this is a screenshot of our book that we use. This is the Go Math series in math. So this page would be what I would do for my students at the beginning of a lesson. So we would talk about vocabulary. We would dissect the essential question, talk about the verbs and what the words mean in that target. We would go over the vocab, make sure the students understand the difference in these three things and make sure they understand what the word period means in this sense. So the I do por uh, portion again is just the teacher modeling what is expected from the students for this lesson. The we do portion of this is the students and the teacher are working together on a page. So this share and show, the students and the teacher are doing this together um, asking what would this be? What could the answer be? And we would discuss that. Um, we sometimes do this in small groups, and again, the teacher is always assisting the students. Though you do is where the students are going to do it on their own. So this looks like what that could be an example of. This is the practice and homework sheet. Now, we don't do it as a homework sheet. We do it in class. The students get a chance to um, answer these questions. Once they finish, they bring it to me. I check it, and immediately I can... Um, fix any misconceptions that they have. If they missed something or maybe didn't understand what the question was asking, we have time to automatically go in and correct that. The aspire to do are those harder problems, the think smarter and the go deeper, the problem solving application problems. These are the tougher problems that are in our book that we do not always get to because we are so working towards just understanding the general idea of what these questions are. Um, my students are ability groups, so especially that lower group that I have, we definitely don't, we rarely get to these sorts of problems because they are just so far above where these students are performing currently. Exit tickets, I use either sometimes in small groups, sometimes I give them at the end of a lesson, and then sometimes I give them the next day um, in place of like a morning work. So exit, exit tickets are used to determine which students have achieved mastery on the specific targets. I will give them a grade for this on a one to five scale. We use this as standards-based grading. One means I'm not really sure that you understand what you're asked to do. Five mean you got it, you don't have any questions, and you're really good at what you're doing. This is a pre-recorded video for the lesson. Um, I will play just a small bit of it. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. So this is what it would look like for my students who are working on today's lesson. So that was 1.2. So this is what it would look like. This is me modeling this for my students. My friends, this is lesson 1.2. This is your pre-recorded video before you start to work on it by yourself. I'm going to do the unlock the problem with you. So we are going to write this number in standard word and expanded form. So that number is 262,400. Every third number, you will put a comma. That is to separate the periods. Last video, we talked about last names and first names. So thousands is the last name and hundreds, tens, and ones are always the first names. Like we have a couple different Macy's in our class. 
but they all have different last names. So that's how we tell the difference in them. Same thing for these. They have the same first names, but their last names are different. So we have this number, 262,400, and we're going to put it in three different forms. So the first form that we're going to put it in is a standard form. Stand so that's just the general idea of what that could look like in my classroom, just the introduction to the lesson, talking about what these words mean. So collaboration in my classroom. Collaboration is a huge part of my classroom. We use it almost every day. We use Kagan strategies, um, the Kagan mats. We use other strategies to help incorporate collaboration. The Kagan mats are used, um, the high students are not all going to be in one group. The low students are not going to be all in one group. And then you have the medium highs and the medium lows that you separate out into um, the groups. That way everybody has an even group. So the numbers on the mats correlate to which one they are. Of course, the kids don't know that but that's what that's for. The consensus mats, I love these a lot. These are used for collaboration as well. So you'll have four students, each of them will put, if you're number one, I'm number one. So Shelby would be number one. April could be number two, Melissa number three, and then Jessica number four. Um, all of those would be your boxes. So you would put what you think the answer is in your box. And then after everybody has filled in their box, you would talk about, why you think you're correct as opposed to why Jessica thinks she's correct and you would come up with which answer really is the correct answer. Here are some examples of collaboration in my room. These are during stations so you can see that we have a technology station, we have automaticity, we have my small group teacher table and then we have like a skill station. Um, these are all based on Kagan and star scores and that is how I place these students. Progress tracking, we have class um, goals posted in the room. We fill up the thermometers based on how well we are meeting our goals, what that would look like. The chapter one place value sheet is used for students to see what they need any extra help on. So they are filling in this. My goal for this lesson is to get an 80% or higher. Um, my mastery check, I got an 80% on. So that's just them self-checking themselves with, okay, I need to do better on multiplying. I need to do better on dividing. Student motivation, I use these punch cards. So once they get 10 punches for doing something great, doing what they're supposed to be doing, homework's turned in, met their AR goal, any of those things, they can get a punch on the punch card. And then once their card is full, they get to pick a treat out of the treasure box. For metacognitive reflection, you'll notice that I have an example of student work. I am going through and I'm putting notes as to what they need to change, what opportunities do you need to be given to review and make this assignment what it should be. So students benefit from reflection by seeing what they did wrong and being given opportunities to correct. Mastery-based grading and standards-based grading um, is beneficial so that students do not just take an assignment or quiz once and get a final grade. The students are given multiple opportunities to correct and revisit an assignment while attempting to master the standard because the ultimate goal is student mastery of a standard, not great, I got a 100% on the test. And then never look at the topic again. You want to make sure that it's actually engraved into them. So to conclude, the Modern Classroom Project has given me an outlook for my classroom that was needed and useful. Being able to put these techniques and procedures to the test in my own room has been eye-opening. I'll just continue to implement self-paced learning, gradual release model, exit tickets, daily collaboration, student motivators, and self-reflections.